Hey everybody, welcome to Nutrition Q&A 6. Gonna get right into it, so let's go. First question is about calorie breakdown. So your resting metabolism breaks down 60 to 75% of all of the calories you consume each day. That means that anywhere from two thirds to three quarters of all of the food that you consume is broken down by your resting metabolism when you're not doing anything else. The thermic effect of activity, TEA, only breaks down 15 to 30% of your total calories each day. So the energy used to actually work out and exercise only makes up 15 to 30% of that calorie breakdown. So probably a lot less than you were expecting. And finally, the thermic effect of feeding, TEF, makes up the final 10% of calories burned. So the energy it takes to actually digest food is what breaks up 10% of the calories that you consume. Alcohol breakdown. Alcohol dehydrogenase breaks up 80% of the alcohol in your system. So ADH is responsible for almost all of the alcohol breakdown. The MEOS system breaks down another 10% of that alcohol, and the final 10% is broken down by you, by the lungs, pores, and urine. I think that's pretty interesting because just breathing, sweating, and peeing out alcohol actually works. So if you're ever too drunk that you don't think you can control yourself, uh, just know that breathing is the actual only thing you can do and going to the bathroom will help. 10% is not a little amount and taking deep breaths is the fastest way to regain your control. Okay, the next card is about metabolism, the resting metabolic rate. It is a big equation that has a lot of numbers that you don't need to memorize, but you should plug in your own numbers into the equation to figure out for yourself what your RMR actually is. So the RMR formula is 9.99 times weight in kilograms plus 6.25 times height in centimeters minus 4.92 times years of age plus 166 times sex minus 161. That is the equation. Then you take that whole number and multiply it by your activity factor. That number differs based on if your activity level is light, moderate, or very active. Light activity equals 1.4 to 1.7. Moderate activity, so anywhere between 1.7 and 1.9. And very active, 2 to 2.3. Your RMR is the amount of calories you burn when your body is completely at rest. So to multiply it by your physical activity factor will give you how many calories you need to consume every day to maintain your weight. To fill it in for myself and give you an example, my weight in kilograms number would be 72.7, height in centimeters would be 180, years of age 20, and then sex male is a one. And when you plug that whole equation in, my calories for the day would be 1,757.6. Not a very even number, but if you multiply it by the 2.1 activity factor, that means I have about 3,600 calories a day to maintain my weight. I think that's a little high. I don't think I work out that much, but that is how many calories it says I burn each day, so I should consume that many calories to maintain my lifestyle. Next card is on the BMR, the basal metabolic rate. Okay, the BMR is the sum total of energy expended on involuntary activity. And unsurprisingly, it is the lowest during sleep. So your BMR is always lowest when you're sleeping. There are many equations out there that determine BMR. Some are more accurate than others. I'm gonna compare them right now. The catch mccardle method is the most accurate as it accounts for your entire body composition. The Cunningham method is the second most accurate BMR model. It requires precise body composition tests, and it is a little more likely to overestimate than the catch mccardle method. The mifflin saint Gior method is a simpler method that does not require precise measurements. So it is not as accurate, but it is fairly accurate. The Harris-Benedict formula is simple and easy, and it is the least accurate of the four here. So that's the difference between BMR and RMR. Now you know the differences between them, what they signify, and how to determine them for yourself if you want. 
Okay, so the next question is about endurance athlete fuel and resistance athlete fuel. And this is a pretty big card. There's a lot of stuff on it. So I'm just gonna read it out pretty much word for word. So your pre-meal, which should be four hours before your activity, should be high in carbs, a lean protein, and have low fat and low fiber. As well as hydration, there should be about 20 ounces of water. The pre-snack, which should happen 30 minutes before your run or endurance activity, should also be high in carb, have a moderate amount of protein, and also be low in fat and fiber. And cut the hydration about half, so 5 to 10 ounces of water. Then do your endurance activity. The mid-snack only applies to people who are working out over one hour long, and that should be either sports gels or carbs. And for hydration, uh, it says dependent on sweat rate. And finally, the post meal should happen within two hours of finishing your workout, and it should be composed of a quality carb and a lean protein. And there should also be a lot of hydration, about 16 to 24 ounces of fluid to make up for all the fluid you lost during your exercise. All right, resistance athlete fuel. There are a lot more similarities than differences between resistance and endurance athletes, but there are a few key differences that I'm going to highlight. The pre-meal can be consumed anywhere between two to four hours before your workout, and the composition is high carb, 20 to 30 grams of protein, and low fat, low fiber. So similar to the endurance athlete pre-meal, the hydration is the exact same, 20 ounces of water. The pre-snack is still a half an hour before your exercise, and the composition is the exact same, high carb, moderate protein, low fat, low fiber. Hydration is five to 10 ounces of water. The mid-snack is pretty different. It still only applies to people working out for over one hour, but the composition of the meal should be 30 to 60 grams of carbs per hour and consumed every 15 to 20 minutes. So consume that carb breakdown a little bit every 20 minutes, maybe a third, so 10 grams every 20 minutes. The hydration is still dependent on the sweat rate. So depending on who you are, you will need a different hydration plan. Broken down sports gels are probably still the way to do it. And finally, the post meal taking place about an hour after you're done working out should be between one to 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight carbs and a quarter of a gram per kilogram of protein. So those numbers are dependent on your own body weight and that is the composition of the post-workout meal along with 16 to 24 ounces of water to hydrate and replenish the fluids you lost during that workout. This question is about the hormone leptin. So leptin is very influential in your digestion and how you metabolize food. Leptin is a hormone. It is known as the appetite suppressor and it is stored and secreted by fat cells. So the quality of the fat cells you have will determine how your body is able to suppress your own appetite. Leptin is the hormone that signals for satiety in the brain. And the hormone counterpart to leptin, ghrelin. Ghrelin is the appetite stimulator. It is released by the stomach and it is what signals your brain to want to eat and to be hungry. The concentration of ghrelin you have in your body is influenced by your age, your activity level, your gender, your blood sugar, and your leptin. So they influence each other and both play a huge role on how hungry you are, how full you feel, and whether or not you can control your own appetite. All right, guys, Nutrition Q&A 6 done. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like. If you enjoyed that, check out another video here or subscribe for all of my stuff here. I upload every week. Follow me here. I post a lot. Thanks and see you next week.